Hi everybody, so in video 1991 we went up to Kew Gardens and looked at the idea of biophotovoltaics, that is, taking sunlight, using photosynthesis in plants and producing electrical energy directly. Now it's great to understand concepts, it's great to have the history, but it's great to actually build one and so we're going to build one. Now we're not on our own. There are a couple of key players in this and they are Planty Moss FM and the Green Fab Lab in Barcelona. It doesn't matter which plant you use, the essential process is the same. So, use that process of photosynthesis. The photosynthesis allows the plant to grow, it gives out waste products, and it's actually the microorganisms at the roots of the plants that are responsible for the production of electricity in the same way as a microbial fuel cell. Now, as they produce the electrons and the electricity, of course, carbon dioxide is produced. But then the plants are using up the carbon dioxide, which makes the whole thing net neutral. But essentially, it is a microbial fuel cell, but using photosynthesis. Hence the term biophotoelectric. Planty are a Dutch company who've put together trays on their roof where they're using grasses and a double electrode system as their plant battery. Moss FM is actually a bit of a um, experimental station and getting about four and a half volts out of that setup and they're demonstrating that you can do lots of different things with it. They play a radio and run a weather station. The Green Fab Lab have created a panel that they can charge a phone with and they're proposing wall-mounted pods filled with moss that can create an energy system and they've gone to the trouble of calculating how much area they would need of how much moss. So clearly moss is a very good candidate for this kind of work. So clearly, moss is the plant of choice, and you can understand that. I mean, it's pierced to grow on nothing. It's incredibly robust. It loves to be wet, and it's absolutely everywhere. So moss it is. I've got some moss it's right there on my roof. So all I have to do is get up there and collect it. Hey, Luke. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm going up. Okay, that's my moss. Let's make a battery. Okay, so making this thing is, well, well, simplicity in itself. It's ridiculous how easy it actually is. All you really need is some kind of tray, and a whole load of kind of trays are going to do it. I'm going to use the top of a plastic pot. So we've got this tray. Now we need a bottom electrode, and I'm going to use this stuff, which is graphite foil. And I'm using this because, well, it's plant-friendly and it's conductive enough, but there are a ton of things that people have used, including stainless steel mesh. Cut it to size, stick that in there. This is a bit of carbon felt, and you get this sort of stuff in uh, odor eaters and cooker hoods, that sort of thing. Again, it's conductive, it's pure carbon, so it isn't going to kill the plants, but again, you could use alternatives like stainless steel mesh, which I have seen used. Now, if we stick that one on top of the other like that, it's just going to short out, so we need something between it, and again, a load of things work really well, right from cotton wool, wood shavings, and I use zeolite clay. You stick that on there. Now we, we get our moss, and we stick our moss on top of that. That's your cell. You connect to here and here, and you're ready to rock and roll. This stuff then photosynthesizes away, creates the energy, and we're able to collect it. But you can use all kinds of plants. If you're using a plant and seed, you're going to need soil on there as well as the moss. But let's put a neater one together and see how it does. Now, it doesn't produce an enormous amount. So one of the best things you can do with it is wire this up to something like a supercapacitor that will store the energy for you. And then you can run something when the supercapacitor is full for when it's had a little bit of time in the sun. Okay, let's give this a go and see what happens. Now, I did leave this charging for a couple of days and it is connected to that supercapacitor and I did do a very nice job with it in this plant pot. But there we go, it's spinning that motor like billy oil. With these plant batteries, don't forget to water them because they work better with water. In fact, the more water, the better they are, which is why you're seeing these early versions as being aquatic plants and mosses. 
Now, they're early versions, and if you've ever looked at the early version of the motor, you'll know that they're a bit pants. So, some people might get the idea that you're going to need a planet the size of Jupiter in order to charge your e-scooter, but don't forget that Green Fab Lab have done those calculations to show how much of this is going to be needed in order to do certain jobs. And it turns out, actually, it's quite impressive, even at this early stage, and it certainly makes a great project for a science fair or for you to investigate to try and improve it, because we have done improvements on this battery before. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.